Despite recent weakening inflation statistics, last week, influential mainstream analyst Ken Griffin predicted that high inflation could continue, quote, for decades, as pandemic aftereffects and wars in Europe and the Middle East drive a retreat of the globalization that's lowered export prices across the world for a generation. The idea is that a new era of trade restrictions could come in, which would break existing supply chains. Those would then be replaced by national versions of the supply chains that produce at much higher costs. So you wouldn't be able to buy $20 toasters and $12 shirts. Maybe you'd be looking at double that. I'm reluctant to trace decades-long trends from the week's headlines, but indeed protectionism is on the rise worldwide, with politicians pushing for crony restrictions to keep out the foreigners. My own preference is that we instead focus on making it easy to actually make stuff in America. So metaphorically, if your fields are dry, you don't ban food imports and starve your people, you water the damn field. Still, protectionism is always popular, and both COVID and the wars are giving countries an excellent excuse. The problem is that if deglobalization is raising prices even while government deficits are driving inflation, it could indeed mean years or decades of rising prices. Those rising prices would then translate into stagnant economic growth as central banks keep interest rates high to try and control the same inflation. As Griffin notes, that would potentially slow the global economy for decades, and of course those high rates would accelerate our own debt crisis as the $33 trillion national debt gradually rolls over into higher and higher rates. Ultimately, we could be looking at close to $2 trillion in annual interest on top of the trillion-dollar deficits Congress is already pumping out. There's actually been a concerning amount of elite chatter recently about the idea of a coming great stagnation that would be long-lasting. Tyler Cowen of George Mason has been pushing the idea for a decade how that, as he puts it, quote, we ate all the low-hanging fruit and got sick. Meanwhile, Nuriel Rubini, dubbed Dr. Doom in the media after predicting 2008 crisis, wrote a long article predicting stagflation for years to come. Rubini's got a laundry list of causes, deglobalization, yes, but also the weaponization of the dollar, rising regulation, aging populations, public and private debt, and unfunded liabilities, all culminating in, quote, massive insolvencies and cascading financial crises that will drive central banks to print yet more money which seems a pretty safe bet given the past 100 years of central banking. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained. What's next is I think there are very good odds of a long period of stagflation. Not because we ate fruit and got sick, but because governments worldwide are busy confiscating and knocking down the economy's load-bearing walls. At this point, government spending absorbs nearly half the economy, and they use some of those proceeds to harass and crush what survives. The endgame depends on whether the frog jumps. Do voters see what's actually happening with enough clarity that they man up and vote for radicals who will stop it? If so, they could slash government spending, rein in or shutter the central banks, and return to the prosperity we enjoyed through, say, the 1960s. If not, then yes, I think it could be decades. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.